Well, Christmas, we have been saying over the last several weeks here, it's more than a holiday, it's a theology. Uh, this is really a practice of what we believe. I mean, do we believe this? Are we going to believe it tomorrow and the next day and the next day? Is this what we really believe to be true about God? This audacious claim that people who follow Christ celebrate all the time that God will become a man, this idea of the incarnation. The Bible is big. It is, in fact, the entire Bible is speaking about this, about the incarnation and the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus that brings us salvation. It's really hard to know where to start. We could pick anything in the Bible and talk about Christmas, really, but I'll give you one verse tonight that really, I think, encapsulates the entire message of the gospel for us, the entire story of Scripture for us. It's this right here. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. This guy who didn't believe, and then he did, the Apostle Paul, he was against this idea of Jesus, and then he embraced it and gave his life for it. He said this, the grace of God has appeared that brings salvation to all people. The grace of God has appeared that brings salvation to all people. The grace of God. Maybe when you think about God, your first thought isn't grace. Maybe that's because of what you've been taught or maybe that's what you've experienced from other people who claim to follow Jesus, but they don't really give much grace. Maybe you just look at your own life and say, yeah, I don't really deserve much grace. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. When God tells us about himself, he's telling us about his grace. He's telling us about his love. He's been shouting this all throughout scripture. He's been sending prophets messages to speak this to us. He sent his own son, for God so loved the world that he sent his own son into the world to give us this message, the grace of God. Guy, when, when you think of God, what God wants you to think about is his grace. He wants you to think, God's not trying to separate from me and hold my sins against me. He, he actually wants to press in closer to me. He wants to take away from me anything that's between us so that I can have a relationship with God. That's how much he loves us. That's what God has been telling us about himself. The grace of God has appeared. There's a beautiful verse in Psalm 103 in the Bible, and it talks about God. It's a, it's a representation of, of God spoken to us through an earthly father, something that we should be able to understand more of God through, and not all of us have been able to. But it says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on us. And then it goes on to say, he doesn't hold our sins against us. Like, when you think of God, what God wants you to think about is his grace. Jesus came to be grace. And in fact, he was introduced here, the grace of God that brings salvation. He, he's bringing us something that we didn't have. I mean, Christmas, is, it, it's, it's all a symbolism of God's gifting something to us. He's bringing us something that we don't have. And maybe you're going to give somebody something that they need, or maybe you're going to give somebody something that they want, or maybe you're going to give somebody something that they don't want. That'll be bad. But what God is giving us is something that we need more than we understand, and we want it more than we realize. In fact, what God is bringing to us, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. The, the grace that brings, he brings us, we want it more than we realize. What, what do you want the most in life? Whatever it is, it's just so far away from what God wants to bring you in Jesus. There's nothing in this world. There's no human relationship that could compare. There's no possession. There's no pleasure. There's no purpose in this life that could compare with what God wants to bring you when he wants to bring Jesus into your life. The grace of God that brings salvation. Salvation. God is holy. He is pure. He is perfect. He's never wondered. He's never worried. He's never apologized. He's never made a mistake. He's never said, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have thought that through better. You know, maybe I should have asked somebody some counsel. He's never needed wisdom from somebody else. He's never gotten tired. He's the source of power. All power comes from him. He's never not existed. He's the only uncreated. I mean, this God, he's bringing us salvation because we need it. He is holy. He is God, and we are not. We are flawed. If you don't believe it, ask somebody who knows you. We are flawed, we are fragile, we're not eternal, past, and we're not here longer than God decided we would be. We're flawed, fragile, and finite, and we have a problem. And we need to be 
Saved is the word the Bible uses, this word in this verse, salvation. We need to be rescued. We need to have our relationship with God repaired. So that's what God did for us. That's what Christmas is all about. Better than any present you'll get under the tree, better than anything you can give to anybody. What you want more than anything you wanted for Christmas is this. You want this salvation that God brings into your life. You want to know that I'm not alone. That in fact, the God of the universe knows me and loves me and sees me and he'll never leave me. And whatever was between me and God, he has brought a gift to me that removed the distance. He repaired this gap that we broke and he reconciled us to himself. This is the story of Christmas. It's a theology, it's a doctrine, it's an idea about God. It's not lights and presents and songs, it's salvation. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. He, he appeared. He didn't begin, but he came here. He was born. Jesus was born at Christmas that we celebrate, but he didn't begin. He is fully God who stepped into human flesh. There, there were babies who became kings, but there was never a king who became a baby. Jesus was God, he never not existed. The beauty of the Trinity of God, the Father and the Son of the Spirit, the closest we have to understand it is the complexity of humanity, our body, our soul, our spirit, that we are eternal beings created in the image of God and we will exist eternally. And he appeared, he didn't begin, but he was born. He left heaven and came here. As we've been studying the last couple of weeks here, as we've been looking deeply at the incarnation, he took on all of our human flesh. He was without sin, but he, understood all of our struggles. He identified with us in every way the Bible teaches us. He appeared here, he was born here, but he didn't begin. The grace of God that is bringing you salvation. He's bringing it to you, you can't go get it. You can't go find it, you can't go buy it, you can't barter for it, you can't make a deal somewhere, you can't do it on your own, you can't make this gift on your own. He's gonna have to bring it to you. It's not available anywhere else. It's completely unavailable. So he's gonna bring salvation to you, gonna repair the relationship between us and God caused by our own sin. He's gonna appear on the scene, he's gonna step into our time, and it says, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, to all humankind, to all people. That includes you. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people, you. He, he came to appear to you. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening. That's why you've heard this maybe over and over, or maybe for some of you, for the first time, it feels like you're hearing this. Like God's grace to me, not, not judgment or condemnation, but he's bringing me close, he's coming after me, he's bringing me something I couldn't get anywhere else. And he wants to save me, he wants to reconcile. For me, yes, to all people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about people who have done what I've done? No, to all people. All, all colors and cultures and languages, all nations, all people groups, all places around the world, rich people, poor people, educated people, uneducated people, moral people, immoral people, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people. That includes you. Yes. And my greatest hope when we have gatherings like this is that for someone here, surely there's someone here, who before this moment, you've resisted this idea. You've rejected it. But maybe now you're ready to receive it. Like something's gonna happen. This invisible exchange between heaven and earth, this contract that God has offered us just to accept it, just to receive it. I'm gonna bring it to you. I'm gonna do it all for you. I just want you to metaphorically unwrap this and open it. I'm giving you a gift. I just want you to receive it. John chapter one says this, whoever believed in him and whoever received him, he gave the right to become a child of God. All you have to do is believe this and receive it. If it's something else, what would it be? What would it be? Would you ever get good enough? Could you ever undo enough? Could you ever get holy enough or pure enough? No, you just have to say, I am not good enough. I am a sinner and I do need a savior and I do believe what Jesus said to be true about himself, that he is God in the flesh. He lived and died and rose again to pay the price for our sin. 
that's what I believe and I receive it. Jesus, I'm a sinner and you're the savior. Would you save me? I mean, there are many people in this room who have come to that moment in their lives, including me, where I didn't believe and then I did. And something happened upon this belief in Jesus, this accepting of this gift. Where the Bible says he, he gives us his spirit, comes into our spirit and makes us alive, gives us a new life in Christ and he starts to do his work in our life. And all of heaven rejoices. So I don't know what you're expecting from Christmas. Every Christmas is a little bit of a disappointment. If you're watching movies or looking at normal Norman Rockwell paintings, I mean, you know, no Christmas is gonna be perfect this year. But here would be the most perfect thing. That at some old gym in a plastic chair on Christmas Eve of 2023, you accepted this gift that Jesus has offered you. For you, this may be the moment of all of your eternity. I'd love for you to, all of us, to just take a moment and be still. And there are two people and people in two different places in this room. One, people who have in the past at some point said, I do believe Jesus. I do believe these things about you and I receive you. I submit to you, I, I follow you, I lay my life down. You, you are God. Some of you have done that and you should say, again, Jesus, thank you for your salvation and your grace that appeared in my life. And I will follow you, continue to follow you. And then there are others who, when you came into this room, no, that's not your story. But now it could be right now. In fact, the Bible says today is the day of your salvation. Right now in this moment, the spiritual exchange happens between you and God. Where you would just say, Jesus, I have resisted you. I've rejected you. But today I receive you. I am a sinner and I need a savior and I believe that is you. I believe you are God who became a man who lived and died on a cross and rose from the grave to pay for my sin. I believe in you and I receive you. Would you save me? Give me a new life. I'll follow you. God, thank you for your grace. When we think of you this year, when we think of your grace, would we feel really loved by you? Because that's what you've been trying to tell us, that you love us so much that you would leave heaven and come here to pay for the, our sins with your own life. And I pray that we would know how deeply loved we are by you. And I pray that we would enjoy our salvation and we would enjoy your spirit guiding us to live a completely different life than we would if we were without you. I pray this year we would walk closely with you. And I pray for people who today maybe weren't expecting to have a moment between you and them, but they did. I pray that this new life that you're making available to them, they walk in it and embrace it and believe it. Jesus, we pray this in your name. Amen.